Okay, so now I'm going to be ready uh, for recording. First thing to draw your attention to is at the top here, you've got this count off. If I press this, this basically means that at the moment as default, it will give me a two bar counting before it begins to record. So if I arm this now, so this channel, and I press three on the keypad, which is for record. You hear then that's given me a two bar count in, then it starts to record. Now, obviously in this record in the drum track, I've already got a count in, so I don't need to use it in this instance, but it is useful um, if you you haven't got any drums like that, or you just need that kind of setup just to kind of give you a lead in for when you're recording. So I'm gonna undo that. So I'm gonna turn the count off for the minute. And I'm gonna take back to the beginning. So what I'm going to do is just do a normal recording uh, and then I'm going to demonstrate a, a typical kind of punching in this mode. So I need to make sure before I do that as well, that in the mixer, that I turn this down. The reason being is that I might end up, well, I will end up with latency because I will hear the output from the channel and I'll hear the monitoring from my interface and I'll end up with a doubling, which can be obviously then quite off-putting. So I'm going to turn that down Go back to this window here, go back to the beginning, press three to record and then make a start. Now you'll see there's an, a problem because I haven't set my input. So in order to set the input, I need to, I'm going to highlight these three channels and I'm going to hold option shift because I'm going to do all these at the same time and select this track here. This is my input that I need. So now, there we go. I've got my guitar sound. So I'm gonna go again, now that I've got the right input. So somewhere I've gone wrong, which is fine, because I'm going to do a drop in. So I'm going to find out where I went wrong. So. So I actually came in too early on the change. So the change is there on bar 23, which is fine. So what I need to do is set up and find an in point and an out point as to, well, where I'm going to drop out so I'm going to just check over here so my recording I'm going to take it from here uh, 20 and I've got it in grid mode and I'm going to go up to 35 what I want to do as well to keep the performance element is I'm going to add this into it now pre-roll and when I toggle that, you'll see that this little flag turns orange. What it means is that when I hit record, Pro Tools will give me a two bar pre-roll before it starts to record. And I can also get it to add a post roll so it will play for two bars afterwards as well. Uh, and that looks like this. So I'm gonna press three to record. Again, I've gone too early, so I'm going to go, so I'm just take that along, so go again.
So there we go. And now I can check and see how I've done. So I'm going to get, bring up my mixer, unarm this, and I'll play it back quickly just so we hear it. So it's there. I mean, I can get into this and edit it better, but you've seen the process there of actually um, bringing in the next part. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to record another guitar part. So when the change comes at 23, I'm going to have this new part. So I'm going to add it in this section on the channel two. Okay. Make sure I might as well turn all the faders down that I'm not using. So I'm going to actually loop record this just so I've got a couple of goes at it. So I'm going to set this to loop, and you'll now see that that's changed. You've got a loop here, and that will actually loop around, enable me to do it a couple of times. So I'm just going to give myself that little bit of a run in as well so I don't end up um, being rushed. So here we go. So got it armed, three to record. So now that I've done that, in order to see it, if I go to this, I'm just going to expand this so you can see. I'm going to unarm it, go to waveform and change it to playlist. You'll now see here are the um, takes that I've done. There's the first take, uh, which is, uh, or the last take, sorry, that I've done. And I can swap and look at the first one, which is here. And if I want to put that in place, I can click on that arrow and that will then populate it there. Alternatively, I can undo that. Um, I can also maybe look at this one and go, actually, I quite like what I did in part of that. So I might take uh, the first sort of half of it there. And I can then upload that bit in there. And I can take the second half of this one to the end and upload this one. So you can make a comp, essentially, out of those takes. That's essentially what the loop record enables you to do. So there's loop record. The final one, which I'm going to show you, um, because the other option here is destructive. Now, destructive recording is a hangover from the tape days, whereby if you're recording to tape, you're going to punch in. You need to punch it in exactly right, because otherwise you'd lose whatever was went before. And if you got it wrong, then um, you'd have to go again. So it's a quite a dangerous one. And essentially, in this day and age, it's not required. However, in the early days of Pro Tools, when space and hard drive and disk space and that sort of thing was a commodity, it was useful because you needed to sort of trim and keep everything uh, as small as possible in terms of file sizes. That, as I said, is not an issue these days. So you can do a disrupt disruptive ed uh, record if you're feeling brave um, or you're feeling frugal. 
Uh, as I say, there's no need to do it. But the quick punch is the cool one. This is for essentially uh, putting Pro Tools into listening mode. So what I'm going to do is take it back to the beginning and I'm going to hit play. I'm not going to hit record. Uh, and then at some point I will just hit uh, the punch in and drop my, you know, myself into another guitar part and show you what uh, the uh, quick punch is capable of doing. So I'm going to hit play. So there you go. I've just done a bit of recording and you heard me just mucking about at the beginning. Now, I didn't actually punch in until just before bar 21. However, because I had it in quick punch, I can drag. And the way I do that is making sure that I um, are clicking in the middle of the region and I get that symbol there. I can actually drag this back and Pro Tools was listening into what I was doing beforehand. Um, so if there had been like a moment of brilliance, in this case there wasn't, unfortunately, but if there had, I've captured it and it's there and I can use it. And the player, you know, you don't never miss a thing. So the player may have done something blinding and you've got it. So quick punch, there's no reason why you shouldn't be in that mode when you're doing drop-ins essentially, or if you're going to get them to listen to the track and just kind of say, look, I'll punch you when, when you want to. Feel free to kind of, sort of familiarize yourself with the track, whatever you want to do. You never know. You might just get those little things, those little ad libby bits that might just help progress your production. So those are the four um, elements of the recording modes. So we've got the normal record, and I've shown you how to do a drop in as well, loop record, and the fact you need to make sure that you need to have that set up in the preferences, which is located here under setup, preferences, operation, and then the record dialog automatic create new playlist when recording. So you've got that. I've mentioned about destructive, which is not neither here nor there nowadays. And then quick punch. So there you go. Enjoy. <laughs> 